Welcome back, Patriots. If you're just tuning in, my name's Bill Bailey. I'm your host here at Sons of Liberty 1773. Uh, this is a liberty-minded community, people that like freedom to enjoy their life without the government meddling, uh, right? So uh, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do. Um, so I'm going to get right to the story. Um, you know, I've been, uh, you can say, you know, it's fear porn and there's people on the internet, you know, we're going to go into World War III and uh, they don't know what they're talking about and, uh, you know, and so on. And I'm, and I'm thinking, um, all you got to do is watch the news and pay attention to geopolitical politics. Uh, you don't need to be a rocket scientist to figure out where the world is heading. Uh, there's too many warmongers out there and not enough peacekeepers. And um, it, we're, we're heading to a bad spot. I mean, I think um, the forces of Armageddon are gathering and we're about to witness the last war of humanity. But that aside, if you don't want to listen to, you know, us YouTubers that are, you know, unfortunately, because of the where the world is heading, appear to be, you know, gloom and doomers, uh, why don't we look at a real professional? This is a breaking story today. Um, uh, this news is coming from a professor of political science. So if you won't listen to us, listen to him. Uh, this person's name is, uh, let me get on the other screen where the print's bigger. Uh, John J. Mersheimer uh, is the R. Wendell Harrison Distinguished Service Professor of Political Science at the University of Chicago where he has taught since 1982. He graduated from West Point in 1970, then served five years as an officer in the U.S. Air Force. He then started graduate school in political science at Cornell University in 75. He received his Ph.D. in 1980. He spent uh, the 79, 19, or 1979 to 1980 academic year as a research fellow at the Brookings Institution and was a postdoctoral fellow at Harvard University's Center for International Affairs from 1980 to 1982. During the 1998-1999 academic year, he was the Whitney H. Shepherdson Fellow at the Council on Foreign Relations in New York. Professor Mersheimer has written extensively about security issues in international politics. He has also written many articles that have appeared in academic journals like International Security and popular magazines like Foreign Affairs and the London Review of Books. Furthermore, he has written op-ed pieces for newspapers like the New York Times and the Financial Times dealing with topics like Bosnia, nuclear proliferation, U.S. policies toward India, the failure of Arab-Israeli peace efforts, the folly of invading Iraq, uh, I will add, uh, um, our involvement in Ukraine, uh, the causes of the Ukrainian crisis, and the likelihood of Iran acquiring nuclear weapons. So we have a somebody in the know, right, um, that knows what they're talking about. This is the field of study. Uh, they've got a lot of experience in studying international affairs. So um, this is somebody you should listen to if you won't listen to us common folks, if you will, okay? Uh, so let's get to this article. This is over at um, postmillennial.com. Uh, uh, breaking. Uh, this is this Professor Mersheimer predicts the world is headed for a massive conflict between the U.S., China, and Russia. Um, he goes on to say in an interview with political scientist uh, Professor John Mersheimer uh, features uh, his prediction that the world is headed for a massive global conflict, specifically between the U.S., China, and Russia. The interview hosted by um, Freddie Sayers of Unheard goes deep into the specifics of the Russian invasion of Ukraine and the mistakes made by the West that provoked action by Russia. Um, quoting, he says, my basic argument is that the West and and here I'm talking about the United States because the United States drives the train, is principally responsible for the Ukraine crisis, which of course has now turned into a war, uh, Mersheimer began. Uh, the West had a three-pronged uh, strategy involving Ukraine, all of which was designed to make that country a Western bulk work of Russian uh, on Russians, Russia's border, Mersheimer explained. Three-pronged strategy first called for bringing Ukraine into NATO. That's when the uh, 
Democrats aren't laundering money through the state. Second, bringing Ukraine into the European Union. And third, promoting a color revolution, an orange revolution in Ukraine that would turn Ukraine into a pro-Western liberal democracy. This three-pronged strategy, the Russians unsurprisingly viewed as an existential threat. Yeah, no kidding. Mersheimer explained, adding that the U.S. forced NATO to say that Ukraine um, uh, would become part of NATO. Um, Mersheimer, Mersheimer made clear that he thought that Ukraine defeating Russia in this war is foolish, uh, which I've always thought, but said that it's a figment of the West's imagination to think that Russia would in, invade a NATO country such as the Baltic states, Romania, or Poland. Um, going on here, he says, uh, that's why... Um, uh, they're wrecking Ukraine now, he said, later adding that there is no way that Ukraine will ever truly uh, be neutral and not aff affiliated with the West. The Russians aren't going to accept that, he said. Uh, much later in the interview, Mersheimer is asked about the future of liberal democracies in the world uh, where there are rising powers who don't hold the same values of the United States. Um, I'll skip down to this part. Uh, Mersheimer, Mersheimer said that he believes that both the rising conflicts with Russia and separately with China are more dangerous than the Cold War was. I definitely believe that. I would argue that not only do you have two instead of one, uh, each of those dyads is more dangerous than the conflict dyad in the Cold War, he said. Uh, as we have talked about today, the United States and Russia are almost at war in Ukraine, and we can hypothesize plausible scenarios where the United States ends up fighting against Russia in Ukraine. Uh, and then we talked about the U.S.-China competition and the problems associated with Taiwan, and Taiwan is not the only flashpoint in East Asia. There are also the, uh, there's also the South China Sea, the East China Sea, and the Korean Peninsula. So you could imagine a war breaking out between the United States and China in East Asia and a war breaking out in Ukraine involving the United States and Russia, he said. Uh, that would be World War III, folks. I think more easily than that, uh, I th I'm sorry, I think more easily than you could imagine a war breaking out during the Cold War in Europe or in East Asia involving the United States and the uh, former Soviet Union. So I think we live in a more dangerous times today than we did during the Cold War, and certainly than we did uh, during the uh, unipolar movement, uh, which would be after the collapse of, we were a bipolar controlled world when prior to the collapse of the Soviet Union. Once the Soviet Union collapsed, we became a, a uni, unipolar movement. And I think if anything, the situation is only going to get worse for reasons that you and I have talked about regarding Ukraine as well as Taiwan. Um, folks, I will, I will leave the link to this article down in the description. But um, listen, the, the people in the know are telling you. Uh, remember I had the video yesterday, warning sign, Great Depression ahead. This is a warning sign, World War III is ahead. And I did a prepping video earlier today just asking you the simple question. If the crap hit the fan right now, I mean, literally, it's World War III. Possibly America has been hit with an EMP. There's a catastrophic event. The stores are going to be looted empty in the next 48 hours. How long do you, right now, looking around your house, how long uh, time can you survive? That was the question I posed in the previous video today. Uh, take a minute to watch it. Uh, I think I gave you some good advice. But we are careening toward World War III. Uh, and I believe it will be nuclear world war. Uh, I think that's ultimate, ultimately where uh, the world is heading. Uh, look, just from a, a simpleton view of humanity, there's never been a weapon made that man didn't use to kill one another with uh, and um, in, in mass numbers, right? From um, bow and arrow to crossbows to catapult, to mortars, to tanks, to missiles, to, you know, on and on and on. And don't think that nuclear weapons somehow 
uh, don't don't figure in the mix. I mean, I've just always figured it's a matter of time, and uh, the um, human persona, if you will, you know, we we've got good and evil in all of us hasn't changed. I mean, uh, for every good person, there's an evil bastard, you know, um, and people always want the same thing: uh, money and power. Uh, it it drives us. Um, Unfortunately, so until um, Jesus comes back and sets his kingdom on earth, um, we are going to, which is probably going to trigger that, by the way, when we get into uh, this last war of humanity. Uh, and the reason I say it's the last war of humanity, because I'm a Christian and I believe this is when the second coming will happen and at least there'll be a thousand years of peace uh, before we're, we're tested again, right? Um at least that's what I believe. You you believe whatever you want. Uh, um, that you know, each to their own, right? So give me your thoughts. Um, re read this whole article if you want. Um, uh, I see the you know um, the latest stuff with. Uh, let me get rid of this, folks. Uh, the latest stuff with Russia is they are amassing a five million man army. They have two million uh, soldiers. They believe it takes five million without using tactical nuclear weapons, okay? It would take five million man army to just swap over Ukraine and take the country. Um, you know, we've cre America created this mess. We went meddling where we shouldn't have been meddling. Uh, we're nation building uh, a Western state right off the border of Russia. They're, you know, pushing Ukraine toward uh, being a NATO member and you're just, you know, you're, you're, you're um, poking the beehive, so to speak. And um, Russia, I think, just had enough. And there's been a border war going on with Russia and Ukraine. I mean, like almost a civil war thing for like six, seven years. Um, and I just, you know, if George Washington was here, he warned about Europe. He said, that Europe is always at war. We do not want to get involved in these foreign entanglements. Uh, but I digress because here we are. Um, and so, you know, I, I think America's, can uh, bear a lot of responsibility for creating this mess. I mean, Putin is the one that attacked his neighboring country, but, you know, he obviously had his reasons for doing it. I don't believe Putin was going to go blitzkrieg like Hitler did in World War II, and I'm going to conquer all of Europe. I think it was strictly Ukraine. And remember, Ukraine was part of the Soviet Union. Um, matter of fact, this December, I should look up the date, is the 100-year anniversary of the formation of the Soviet Union. And I believe there was maybe even a little bit of that in pushing Putin that he wanted to reunite uh, Ukraine with Russia by the anniversary of the um, formation of the USSR. Um, maybe that's some of it. But um, I don't believe Putin was going to go beyond Ukraine. I believe that he was going to... Um, and, and it's a shame that it even came to this because whatever happened to talking... When, you, when you've got a difference with someone, especially your neighboring country, setting down and talking it through, look, you know, um, you, Ukraine, let's work this out. Um, you know, you've got a lot, you're setting on a gold mine of farmland and natural gas. You don't have the resources Russia does. Why don't we help you develop that? We'll get a cut. Just seems like there was a, in, in these people speak the same language. They have family in each side, you know, of the, of the border. Uh, it just seems like this could have been avoided, but uh, we're beyond peace at this point, I think. Um, we have an administration in Washington that, you know, it's always Russia, 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 instead of real, the real enemy is China. Um, that's just not going to back down. Putin isn't backing down, and he's not going to accept a Western democracy on his border. Um, so we're heading, we're, can't, you know, I've been saying this stuff, but here's a professor of political science warning we're heading for World War III. Um, so anyways, give me your thoughts, as always. Comment down below. Uh, if you like the content of this uh, channel, join our community. Just hit subscribe. Um, Patriot, you know, it's a um, free, you don't, you don't have to be in America, folks, to join this channel. You don't, uh, and it says Sons of Liberty. I'm a, uh, I'm a, uh, I, I love the founding of America. I love the story of America. Uh, the Sons of Liberty were uh, the rabble rousers of the day. They actually formed in 1765, but somebody already had that YouTube name. 
1773 is the year the Sons of Liberty pulled off the Boston Tea Party because they didn't like being overtaxed. And, you know, it's funny, if you go back at that time period and, and they were pissed over these taxes uh, the, the tyrannical government of their time was putting on them, if they seen the taxes we are taxed today, they would, um, they would, you know, they, they'd be saying, what the hell's wrong with you people? How did it ever come to this? Uh, but, you know, it's the Overland window. You know, you do it in little, little increments over time. What you wouldn't accept here, you'll accept here. Uh, because they just move the ball a little bit, you know, and the Overland window just keeps keeps moving. Uh, so anyways, um, no matter where you are in the world, uh, if you like the idea of being your own person, uh, being religious or not religious, practicing whatever religion you want to be, uh, but enjoying our God-given natural rights and the, for the government to stay the hell out of our lives, that we, you know, our private property is our private property, not the government's. Uh, and that we want to, you know, enjoy our individual freedoms and live in a world where the people run the government. The government doesn't run the people. So um, it did work in that that way in this country for about a little over 200 years, and we're losing it. I mean, right? Um, we no longer control the government here in the country. Um, it, it certainly looks that way to me that we are being controlled by the government. And that's not the America the founders left us with. Um, so, all right. Um, hope you join the channel. Um, it's always in my um, description. I'll put, I'll put the article that I just shared from um, Post Millennial. Uh, read it, share it. Um, and I always have my link. Our discount code for this channel is SOL1773 at mypillow.com, SOL1773. Save up to 66% uh, at mypillow.com. And I always have my affiliate link uh, for my Patriot Supply. Uh, and if you if you use that link when you purchase through my Patriot Supply, they give a little kickback. It's not much, a little bit of money. Uh, and then also Phantom Works now. Um, I said it wrong earlier in the video. Uh, it's Phantom Works Off Grid. Um, uh, uh, popular TV sh um, uh, show on um, Motor Trend TV one of the restoration programs, Phantom Works. So I know Dan Short and Melissa's wife, they started a, um, a Phantom Works off-grid, but they also started, and this is the important part, a, um, a survival website for buying uh, freeze-dried foods, water filtration and all that stuff, store. Uh, he's jumped in, you know, with both feet. And the his website, some great deals there, folks. Check it out. They're working on the website, so there may be, some kinks and stuff um, as, as you go through it. But I think they're trying to add 50 products a month. Uh, but it's easyhomesteading.com. E, just the letters, easyhomesteading.com. I'll put that link in the description too so you can find it. But um, if you um, would be so kind, give this video a thumbs up. Um, subscribe to our channel if you like the content. And then uh, share these videos. You know, whenever you give them a thumbs up, um, comment and share them. It helps with the algorithm uh, to push this uh, content out to um, more people uh, because they definitely shadow man, uh, you know, channels like this one. I don't know why, you know, but but they do. All right. Actually, I do know why. Uh, we'll end it here. Uh, uh, take care, patriots. God bless you. Uh, keep the faith. Um, you know. Um, we may be going through the valley of darkness, but uh, uh, the light will be, at, we'll see light at the end of the tunnel at some point, but, but we're definitely heading into a storm. And I just want you to all be prepared and ready for it because it's going to be a lot easier to weather when you're a prepper and you're prepared for disaster. Uh, but each to their own, right? I think I give good advice, but um, if you don't want to listen, I mean, that's, uh, that's your prerogative, right? All right, I will see you guys. Bye.